Hey. Sleepy. Pick me up here at 1 o'clock. Pick you up here at 1 o'clock. Where? Age? Age? Middle of 20s. Nationality, Chicago. My phone number is Granite 1466. I'll check with my numerologist before I call. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about you newspaper men? I've been trying to get her phone number for a week. You didn't even have to ask for it. It's all yours. Granite 1466. You're not going to put it in your column, are you? I'd be swamped with calls. What's wrong with that? Yeah, what is wrong with that? It's the lunch break, Mr. Mayor. Would you like to see the switchboard? Oh, sure. Thanks, Miss Carpenter. See you in the papers. Thank you. See you, Crystal. All the long distance calls for the downtown Los Angeles area come through this room. Los Angeles? Uh oh, my roommates. Art class is over. Oh, be a good girl and give me another minute, will you? Well, I've heard that before. Sorry, no posing overtime. Try me some night. Uh, with pleasure. That's not what I meant. Crystal, it looks just like you. Oh, is that good? Like to see some more of my work? You're wasting your time, Rembrandt. She's got a boyfriend in Korea. Long way off, Korea. Yes, a long way off. But he wouldn't want you to get too lonely, would he? He wouldn't want you to get too friendly, either. Sally. Sally! Oh! All finished with Granite 1466? Or do you still get a busy signal? <laughs> Mr. Preble, call for you in the office of girl. Thanks. <laughs> I've got more numbers in the phone company. How's the wolf been doing with all the little red riding hoods? Great. You ask him. I've told you not to call me here. I was busy last night. Working. I don't believe you, Harry. You haven't worked three nights in a row in your life. I've got to see you and talk to you. Rose, I'm tied up now. Call me later, at home. How can I? You changed your number and I can't get it from the operator. You have to help me, Harry. I just can't talk now. Take it easy, I'll be seeing him. Like it? Isn't it wonderful? I'm glad you got black. It'll look good on any of us. You don't mind if I wear it first for one night. Aren't you ever going to open that letter? Right after the champagne. Champagne? You bought champagne for yourself? No, not for myself. You don't understand, Sally. I know. It's your birthday, and that's fine. Every girl ought to have birthdays. Up to a certain point. The flowers. Oh, will you tell Crystal to clean up the bathroom, and I'll take her turn ironing tomorrow. It'll wind up like it always does. With me doing everything. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. Did I hurt you? Oh, I think my sacred iliac shifted two points out. <laughs> Crystal. Mm -hmm. Which may be an improvement. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. My cigarette. Just a minute, I'm coming. Hello? If that's for me, I'm in, no matter who it is. It's for you. Yeah. A man. Hello. Yes, this is Sally Ellis. Tonight? Oh, of course. Well, you don't know how I've waited for this. I'll be right over. Bye. Sally, <laughs> that's no way to talk to a man. 
And it was a man. It was the rental library down at the drugstore. They just got in the new Mickey Mallet mystery. Oh, it's all about a beautiful red-haired debutante who gets hit in the head, stabbed in the back, shot in the stomach. Pow! Pretty badly hurt. She staggers down the I stairs. I know all that. You haven't even read it yet. Oh, but that's what they're all about. Lucky girl. Living a life of passion and violence. Now me, I've got my life with Homer. Drive-in dinner, drive-in movie, and afterwards we go for a drive. It's still better than a dime store novel, Crystal. Ah. Uh, you know, you don't appreciate Homer. I don't know what exactly they are, but he has a lot of good qualities. I, I never could understand why you two broke up. Homer's so affectionate. Well, I didn't think so when we were married. But now that we're divorced, I'm beginning to like the big lug. Homer always had a husband's faults. But now he has a boyfriend's virtues. Yeah? Oh. <gasps> oh, you. If you've been listening, just forget what you heard. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Happy birthday. Thank you, Homer. Oh, that's sweet of you. Thanks. Well, aren't you going to open it? Why? Don't you know what's in it? The roast! Oh. That's a roast? It shrunk. It's big enough for two. Are you still playing games? Now, look, Hope. You have Crystal here. But like someone said today, Korea's a long way off. And if I can't have him here, I can pretend I have him. It's none of my business, Nora, but why stay in night after night, eating your heart out for some guy who... He isn't some guy who. He's one of a couple of hundred thousand. And I happen to love him. It's fun for me to... To let yourself go to seed? There are lots of guys who take you out for laughs. No monkey business. I would myself if it wasn't you for... You what? Oh, Crystal, I was just, uh... Come on, Homer. Leave her alone. And let's go. That horse I could eat is getting cold. You sure you won't go with this, honey? Mm -hmm. This isn't much of a birthday. I told you, Crystal. It's the way I want it. Have a good time. Happy birthday again. Thanks. Happy birthday, darling. <laughs> Did you get paid today? Yeah. Oh, well, come on, darling. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Have fun. so hot as a letter writer. I remember when we were kids in Bakersfield and I worked vacations in San Joaquin Valley. You used to ball me out for not writing. Well, I guess I've gotten worse. But that doesn't mean I haven't been thinking about you. A lot. And also thinking about someone else, Nora. A nurse I met in Tokyo when I took a load of Kami shrapnel with me. 
Angela, that's her name, supplied the strength and the courage and everything else to pull me through. I didn't want it to happen, but there's nothing a guy can do about the real McCoy, and that's what this is. We're in love, and when I get out, we're going to be married. That's the story, Nora. And I guess there's nothing else to say except I hope you'll understand. With affection, always, and best wishes for your future. Best wishes for your future. Yours very sincerely. Yours very truly. Hello? Hiya, honey. Not dinner yet? No. Who is this? Harry Preble. I'm taking you up on the suggestion you made this morning. Suggestion? What suggestion? When you were posing for me, remember? How about slipping into something comfortable, like a few drinks and some Chinese food? I'm... I'm sorry, Mr. Preble. I, I think you made a mistake. Discuss my mistakes over those cocktails. Well, what do you say? Hop in a cab and meet me at the Blue Gardenia. All right. I will. Yes, sir. The Blue Gardenia. On Vine, right off Hollywood. You got it? I've got it. You've got what? Just someone on the phone. So I gathered. How'd the dashing lieutenant like the dinner he didn't eat? Fine. It's in the kitchen. I'm going out. Out? Oh, where? I've got a date. With a man? The man. The one on the phone? The one on the phone. Nora, I love mysteries. Look, Sally, I, I haven't got time to talk about it now. I'll, I'll tell you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Polynesian pearl diver. And don't spare the rum. I'll tell the bar. a very fancy man with the ladies, Mr. Preble. Jealous, Joe? Oh, no, no. I fancy men myself. How you do with little black book? Yes and no. I've got to do a little research right now. Table 
<laughs> Hello, Mr. Preble. Hello. <laughs> this is a coincidence. I was just talking to your friend, Crystal. You didn't talk to her. You talked to me. That was you? Uh, I tried to tell you it was a mistake, but you wouldn't listen. You see, uh, Crystal and I lived together, and she wasn't home, so... Well, even if you were wrong about the girl, you, you were right about... I mean, I was alone, and I hadn't eaten, so... I probably shouldn't have come. It was a silly impulse. Impulses aren't always silly. Yes, sit down. Please. See a Polynesian pearl diver before? Not served as a drink. <laughs> These aren't really drinks. They're trade winds across cool lagoons. They're the Southern Cross above coral reefs. They're a lovely maiden bathing at the foot of a waterfall. Oh, that's pretty. Doesn't make much sense, but it's pretty. Did you make it up? Oh, I memorized it. Do you know what a mermaid's downfall is? To achieve a mermaid's downfall, we begin with a seductive rum that insidiously lulls the uh, sense. I think I'll stick to pearl divers. Mm. It's good. <laughs> it's strong. Mainly ice and pineapple juice. Can I get high on one of these? Do you want to? I don't know. I'm not sure what I want. I only know one thing. I'd, I'd like to forget the early part of this evening. Okay. Tonight begins as of now. To us. To us. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Would you like a blue gardenia for the lady? It's a specialty of the house. Aren't they pretty? Oh, they're lovely. The lady would like one, May. Oh, it's you, Mr. Preble. Nice to hear your voice. How are you tonight, sir? Never better. Here you are, Miss. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Gardenia. Now I'm alone with you, and I am also blue. She has tossed us aside, and like you, Gardenia. Once I was near her heart After the teardrops start Where are teardrops too high? Waiter, two more. I lived for an hour What more can I tell? Love bloom like a flower, then the petals fell. Blue gardenia, thrown to a passing breeze, but pressed in my book of men. For an hour, what more can I tell? Loved bloom like a flower, then the petals fell. Blue gardenia, 
thrown to a passing breeze, but best in my book of memory. No more food. These were just the appetizers. Then we ought to have another round of pollen... <laughs> Polynesia. <laughs> there, I got it. South Sea Pod Rivers. <laughs> Wait, bring us another two, will you? <laughs> you know what we ought to do? We ought to order four more now. So we wouldn't keep that poor man running... Backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. <laughs> Are you trying to get me drunk? Oh, that's the trouble with you modern men. You can't hold your liquor. Even with many trade winds over lagoons. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Preble. Harry. Mr. Harry. <laughs> How do you feel? Like a lovely maiden bathing at the foot of the Southern Cross. <laughs> Perfect. Wonderful. And just right. That's good. I wouldn't want you to have had one too many. Oh, <laughs> I think I've had several too many. Where are we going? To my apartment. I've invited a few friends here. Oh, good. Every girl should have a party on her birthday. Is this your birthday? All day. California do. Uh oh. <laughs> I've been working on that for quite a while. I have to finish it tonight if I want the money I've been promised. Tonight? I have to, but I'm not going to. Mm. The night is still young. Your birthday party is just beginning. <laughs> That's not the way I feel right now. A glass of champagne and you'll feel fine. Oh, no, no. I couldn't possibly have another drink. <laughs> oh, so you had a few. One glass won't hurt you. Ouch. Oh, <laughs> see, it's dangerous even before you drink it. <laughs> Just a minute, I... Oh, it's nothing. Yeah. No, no, keep Oh. Uh. Special record to remember our first date. Oh, 
surprise me when they take off their shoes. Uh, oh. I don't think the dancing is such a good idea.
Okay, kids. Here's the mind whistle. Up. Oh, 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 oh. It's Thursday. I get the bathroom first. You make the orange juice. You're on toast and coffee today. Nora. Nora. She's dead. <gasps> dead. Come on, honey. The lady's here with another bright new morning. Oh. Oh. My head. <laughs> it's right where you left it. Hey, what happened to your nightgown? Huh? Oh, I didn't wear one. I, I just fell into bed the way I was. The way you were when you came home? I don't remember coming home. I don't remember much of anything. I know I had a couple of drinks. A couple? The rest of the evening's a complete blank. Here's your vitamin C. No, thanks. Uh, oh. Here. Hold on to this. The arms go into the sleeve. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll wear off by noon. And if it doesn't, there's always aspirin, raw eggs and Worcestershire sauce, sauerkraut juice, or milk and bourbon. All right, Nora, give. What happened? Oh, nothing happened. At least nothing I can remember. Well, I don't blame you, whatever it was. You had plenty of reason. Oh, I read your letter, Nora. I know I shouldn't have, but I did. Oh, it's all right, Sally. Don't take it so hard. No man's worth it. Not 6,000 miles away, that is. They were probably struggling when she backed into the fireplace and grabbed the poker. She must have raised it over her head like this, smashed the mirror, and let him have it. Take it easy, both of you. Now then. You wiped the fingerprints off the poker, huh? I didn't see any fingerprints. I picked it up and put it in its place like I'm supposed to. I see. And the coffee cup, you washed that, huh? That's what I'm paid for, not finding dead bodies. Captain? Yeah. Excuse me. A pair of women's shoes in the hall closet. Suede pumps, five and a half. Mm-hmm. I put them there. They were in front of the couch. You're very helpful. They're not the first pair of women's shoes I've found in front of that couch. Add them to the collection. Hey, do you mind? He ain't very photogenic today. Pardon us. How about another one, just for good luck? Hello, Casey. Hello, Sam. Got another cigarette? What are you doing on a routine murder case? Sleepy heard it on the car radio. He wanted a peek at the day of the party before the other boys beat him to it. Anything special, Captain? Not much. Artist. Got murdered to music. What key? Grab what you need, Al. And let's get out of here. I've got a lot of work to do. Work? You call writing a column work? The cleaning woman said this was still playing this morning. Not much of a clue. We've got a few. A lace handkerchief with blood stains. A pair of suede pumps, size five and a half. And a blue gardenia broken off at the stand. If you want to improve your mind. 
I'll take mine in the flesh. That's how <laughs> Preble got his. Preble? Harry Preble? Yeah, you know him? Yeah, I knew him. Slightly. It's quite a list. He was quite a man with the ladies. Are you sure that one of our girls is involved? All I'm sure of is he got killed. Who's next? Send her in my office, please. All right. Hazel, you posed to Mr. Preble, didn't you? Yeah. They want you in the public relations office. I'll take your board. Don't you! There go the next seven years. The janitor will get it, Hazel. What's the matter, Nora? Don't you feel well? What? Oh. I'm all right. Here we are, a blue gardenia, just like the one I sold to Mr. Preble last night. And the girl with him, can't you remember anything about her? Her uh, perfume, maybe? No, and that's usually the first thing I... Oh, yes, her dress, taffeta. Taffeta has a voice of its own. It rustles. Like no other material. Taffeta. Probably black. That's the fashion this season. And I remember her voice, too. It was a friendly voice. Friendly and quiet. Hampstead, one, two, three, four. Whoa, I feel like I've been put through a ringer. Well, it didn't take long. Here's your party. What's it all about? They told us not to talk. They? The cops. And what questions? Asked if I was out in the rain last night without my shoes on. Just because I have a little cold. Tombstone, Arizona? One moment, please. In the rain without your shoes on? Mm-hmm. Miss Stanley? Miss Stanley, would you take my board? I feel dizzy. The afternoon papers, have they come in yet? No, not yet, honey. Oh, thanks. Got him with a poker. <laughs> Old-fashioned. Here you are, miss. if you want to read about murder. Everybody wants to read about murder. Even when an unknown doll kills a guy nobody ever heard of before. Sudden death sells papers, son. Lesson number one in modern journalism. Lesson number two. Uh, the element of sex. 
beautiful blonde defending her virtue. What makes you think she's a blonde? The Chinese boy who showed her the Preble's table. To an Oriental, all American women are beautiful blondes. I don't dig your code system. What do three exclamation points after a girl's name mean? Hey, that's private stock. I can dream, can't I? Mr. Mayo, how do you know this, this blue gardenia girl's beautiful? They're always beautiful. What did you call her? The blue gardenia. So here's a bit of information about the blue gardenia for my good friend Captain Haynes of the homicide detail. The murderess you're looking for, Captain, was wearing a taffeta dress, probably black. Probably black? Probably bright red. That type of girl never wears black. What type of a girl? Oh, you know Listen this to this. Of... He's almost as good as Mickey Mallet. And I know a few other facts of special interest to the girl who done the who done it. Her voice was quiet and friendly as she drank half a dozen. Half a dozen? Polynesian pearl divers in the Blue Gardenia Cafe last night. But if I know the kind of high voltage dolls the late and unlamented Harry Preble went for, she was just a flashy blonde putting on an act as a lady. Maybe she was fighting for her honor. Nora, a girl would go out with a guy like Preble never heard of that word. Yeah, that's what I told the cop this afternoon. Maybe she was lonely and bewildered. Well, she sure had to be plenty bewildered to go after that wolf's apartment. Maybe she wanted some excitement. Well, she sure got it when she gave him that fast right with the poker. Maybe he deserved it. Honey, if a girl killed every man who got fresh with her, how much of the male population do you think there'd be left? I didn't like Preble when he was alive. But now that he's been murdered, that always makes a man so romantic. Don't be such an idiot, Sally. Me? An idiot? Don't pay any attention. It's just that letter from Korea. Now, I always give a man the air before he gives it to me. Did you have a good time with Homer last night? I must have. He called twice to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn in.
Lady, don't you know it's against the law to burn your incinerator at night? I'm sorry, I, I forgot. I guess it's too late now. But don't let it happen again. No, I won't. Open a window. I need an angle. An angle that'll bring that dame into this office before the cops get to her. <laughs> You've been seeing too many TV shows lately. Well, she's hot copy. She's one out of a hundred murder cases that broke all the wire services. So what happens if she comes in here and throws herself on your tender mercies? If she's guilty, she might get off with one or ten years for manslaughter. If she's guilty? You don't think he hit himself with a poker, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. I'll turn her over to Haynes with best wishes for our future. After you get your story, of course. But what do you want me to do? Hide her in a desk until this whole thing blows over? I'm a newspaper man. I live on headlines. I want to be the guy to nail her. I don't hear the cheerful sound of busy little typewriter keys. Hi, you chief. I was just lying there. No, I know. I know. Hiya, Mac. Aren't you on the wrong side of the tracks? Oh, well, my heart's still down here in the city room, Casey. You leave in two days. Passport, plane tickets, government clearance. Front row seat at the next H-bomb blast on the house. <whistles> That's quite an assignment. But uh, what about my girlfriend, the Blue Gardenia? You left dames before. Write her a letter. At ease. Casey. You. Hey, Casey. Casey! Well, what do you know? Even a managing editor can have an idea. A letter. A letter to an unknown murderess. Blue Gardenia. Any day now, any hour, any minute, the police are going to catch up with you. But all they want is a quick confession. I want to help you. When I say I, that means my newspaper and me. To us, you're a story, a big story. If we get it first, we'll go all out for you. You can trust me, and I promise not to print a line without your permission. By now, you must be frightened out of your wits. You don't know which way to turn. There's no place to hide, nowhere to run, except to me. So take my advice, Blue Gardine. Go to the nearest phone booth and invest a dime on the rest of your life. Dial Madison 60025 and ask for yours very earnestly, Casey Mayo. Yours very earnestly. You can make it stop ringing by taking the receiver off the hook. I'm sorry. I'll get it. Hello? Is this the blue gardenia? Nobody. It was the wrong number. 
Well, nobody just dialed the wrong number again. Hello? Oh, Homer. What? I don't get it. I said, what makes? I asked if this was the blue gardenia. Some joke. Who are you trying to amuse? I can't hear you, Homer. Huh? <laughs> what are you doing, Nora? Uh, I'm going for a walk. But dinner's ready. I don't want any dinner. Nora, what's gotten into you? Nothing. Call me back, Homer. We're having a little domestic crisis. Where are you going, Nora? What business is it of yours? Well, none. None at all. I'm, I'm just concerned when I see you get so upset. Who's upset? We're just concerned about you, that's all. Yeah, you haven't been yourself the last couple of days now. And last night... What about last night? Well, I heard you in the kitchen. And then when you went back to bed, you were tossing around and talking in your sleep. What were you doing? Lying awake all night spying on me, both of you? Why should we spy on you, Nora? I... I don't know why. Oh, leave me alone! Sorry if I startled you, miss. Where could I find a manager? Two doors down. 7B. Thank you. I'm sorry I lost my temper. Don't wait up for me. Lady, if you were the blue gardenia, you'd know what size shoes you wear. She's all set, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Steve. Just a minute, please. Hello? Yes, this is Casey Mayo. Would you hold on a second, please? Sorry to keep you waiting, miss. But if you want your picture in the paper, you'll have to go out and kill somebody first. All right, now tell me just how you murdered Harry Preble. You know how I killed him. Do you want to know why? Because I loved him. With a passion that was bigger than both of us. The size of the passion's important, lady. But tell me first, what size shoe do you wear? Shoe? Eight and a half C. I could wear eight, it's just that eight and a half's more comfortable. Sorry, lady, but your feet's too big. What have we got? Two dozen even. Hello. Hello? Yes, this is Casey Mayo. Mr. Mayo, how... how sincere were you in your column tonight about... about wanting to help the blue gardenia? Very sincere. And you don't think I should... Go to the police? Not if you're the blue gardenia. You'll be black and blue before they got through with you. Is that so? Who is this? Your good friend, Captain Haynes of the homicide detail. Oh. Oh, hello, Sam. I read your ad in the paper. If you'll just tell me what size police badge you wear, I'll come over and pin it in your chest. By the way, has the little lady turned herself in to you yet? Not yet. Well, in case she does, do me a favor, will you? And give her our number, Michigan 5211. Got it? 5211. We'll be most happy to hear from her. Bye now. Haynes and his pixie sense of humor didn't seem to take my letter seriously. Hello. Yes, this is Casey Mayo. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello? Hello? Her voice is muffled, like she's talking through a handkerchief. Well, how can I be sure that you're the blue gardenia? The newspaper said they found her shoes. Weren't they suede shoes? Size five and a half B. And wasn't the rubber heel loose on the left one? Trace this call. We've hit the jackpot. I want to take you up on your suggestion, Mr. Mayo. Meet you someplace. 
Where are you now? I'm... I'm at... Uh... Where's the watchman? Gardenia. Gardenia. Who's this? Officer McManus, sir. Who? Officer McManus. Where's the girl I was just talking to? There's no girl here now, sir. But she... She dropped her handkerchief. Lace edge. Officer, this is Casey Mayo on the Chronicle. Get that handkerchief right down to the police lab. I'll call Captain Haynes and tell him you're on the way. Yes, sir. I traced it to a gas station near the Santa Monica Pier. A cop frightened her away. Do you think she'll call again? I don't know. Why don't you two go home? I'll hang around here a while. Congratulations, Casey. The handkerchiefs match. Well, what happens next? I don't know, Sam. I... Just a minute. Hello? This is about the call that was interrupted earlier this evening. Hold the line a minute, please. Another phony, Sam. Sure, I'll let you know if she calls again. Look, lady, I've had a couple of dozen phone calls tonight. Unless you're the one that was interrupted by the arrival of the cops, I'm just not interested. But that's the one I mean. The one about the shoes, remember? Size five and a half B. With a loose heel on the left shoe. You didn't make that call. It's not the same voice. Or did you lose a handkerchief you had over the mouthpiece? No, I... I didn't make that call. But I know who did. If you could, uh, if you If you could meet me someplace. Well, where are you? A block from your office. Come up here. It's as good as any place. There's a self-service elevator on the Olive Street side. Come up to the city room on the second floor. It's right opposite the elevator. No one will see you, I promise. All right. I'll be there. Sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. Please come into my office. Would you sit down, please?
Cigarette? Thanks, sir. Still foggy outside? Very. I've been cooped up here since noon. Los Angeles girl? No, I live here, but it's not my home. I don't know where I'm from. My father was a Mick from Boston. That's where I got the Casey. My mother was Italian. He met her in Naples during the First World War. I was born on a Greyhound bus somewhere between Tucson and Los Angeles. Lived here all my life. Fog seems to be lifting. Feel like talking yet? Where would you like me to begin? Let's start with your friend meeting Harry Preble. Maybe I better explain first why she didn't call you back. Yes, why didn't she? She was frightened. So she dragged you into this? She didn't know whether she could trust you. Look. I don't want to sell myself to you or to your friend. I told you. I mean her. The truth in my letter. My paper and I want an exclusive story. We'll pay for it with the best criminal lawyer in town. If she plays ball with us. Otherwise, the police may not be so generous. Will you tell that to your friend? I'll tell her. Where'd you meet Preble? At the phone company? The phone company? Why there? Preble was trying to make time with a lot of the operators. I thought she might be one of them. No, she never told me where they met. She knew him intimately? No. But well enough to go along with him to his apartment and get drunk, didn't she? He said there'd be other people. <laughs> you want me to believe that? I believed it. And I... I only know what she told me. What did she tell you? Everything. Everything up to... Mr. Mayo. Do you think it's possible for a girl to kill a man and not remember? <laughs> she doesn't remember killing him? A lot of murderers forget what they don't want to remember. They call it killer amnesia. A smart DA sees to it that it's only temporary. Why couldn't something else have happened? It's doubtful that a man would hit himself over the head with a poker. You must believe me. She wants to remember, but she just can't. Her mind's a blank for most of that evening. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, use my handkerchief. If I can find one. I have one. There's a trick to eating one of these things, but I've never learned it. <laughs> Do that again. What? Laugh. It's the first time since you walked into my office. The first time since I found out about that night. Doesn't seem to me you found out very much. It's clear up to the time she went to his apartment. The rum drinks, the flower he bought. Even after that, when he put on that King Cole record to celebrate their first date. The Blue Gardenia. Yes. That's what she said it was. Song. Too bad it was a background for murder. Go on. He gave her some coffee. 
smiles. It only made her grogier. Then he kissed her. She thinks she kissed him back. After that, she can't recall struggling with him. No, only vaguely. It's all mixed up in her mind. She just can't remember. Well, tell her to remember this. She hasn't much time. The police are putting a lot of clues together. They know where she bought her shoes. They've got two of her handkerchiefs. And they're looking for fingerprints on that phone she used tonight. What if, um, what if I got her to call you? No, no. No more phone calls. I want to see her. Tell her to meet me here at 3.40 tomorrow afternoon. Why 3.40? I'm still a newspaper man. I've got to have time to make the sunset edition. You know, I'm kind of disappointed that you're not the blue gardenia. Disappointed? In a relieved way, of course. When I heard your voice on the phone, I made a mental picture of you. Was I wrong? What did you expect? Oh, no. Not till I know you better. But you were a big surprise. And now with those dry tears at the edges of your eyes and that mustard on your nose. I have not. I have. See, I can trust you, Mr. Mayo. That's what I want you to tell your friend. Certainly what she needs. Someone she can believe in. Bill, what do we owe you? It's two hamburgers and five coffees. Three for you and two for the lady. That's a dollar forty, Mr. Mayo. Which way is home? I'd, uh, I'd rather not say. I'm meeting my friend, and, uh... I understand. Hiya, Casey! Oh, hi! Did you catch your gardenia yet? Hi, boy. Say, how about a beer? Look, oh, sorry. you're too proud to have a drink of a couple of sober reporters, huh? Now look, fellas, I got a date. I had a date. that community key overtime? I'm fighting a cold. Did the flower girl call back? No. But she sent a friend. A female? Very. Did she go in the little black book? Wrong type. I didn't know there was one. I bought her a hamburger. And then, like an all-good mystery story, she vanished into the fog. It's too bad. We were making beautiful jukebox music together. On the level. I had a feeling I could go for it. Why don't you go on to bed and sleep it off? That's what I do with all my girls. A noble thought. But you don't meet a girl like that very often. At least I don't. Wait up for you. I just got home. Homer took me to the Blue Gardenia tonight. What a mob. 
Everybody wanted to sit with a murderer, Seth, and everybody thinks he did. Want some milk? Oh, no, I had a hamburger and coffee. Good night. Nora. After Homer phoned, I wanted to borrow your new black taffeta dress. I couldn't find it. And then I noticed your pumps were gone. The black suede ones. I know I'm a little slow, Nora. I was a late baby. But that big blind date, you've kept such a mystery. And your jitters all the time about everything. Nora. <laughs> Six, six. I might have known. In fact, I suspected. But you look like you could have gotten rid of him in some other way. Oh, I could have. It just so happens I'm not the girl who did it. I hate gardenias. I'm allergic to them any color. And why are you here? Because the real girl is ready to give herself up to you because she believes what you told her last night. Last night? I hope you meant what you said in your letter, Mr. Mayo. Yes. Where is she? some coffee. Coming up. So you see, Mr. Mayo, I'm just a girl in love with a guy who fell in love with someone else. I know I'm not the only person this has ever happened to. I know I'm not the only girl to get a letter like that, but Anyway, that's how it started. When Harry Preble called, I made the date. Crystal's date. So Nora Larkin from Bakersfield winds up killing a man she's never even been out with before. Not much of a story. Just the truth. But last night you said your friend, I mean you, weren't sure you killed him. There isn't any other explanation. Uh -huh. Mr. Mayo, I guess I should have told you last night, but I just couldn't. I had to have more time to think. I had to be sure I could trust you. Are you sure now? I'm sure. What do we do? I... I don't know. You don't know? After everything you promised in your letter and... and to me, last night? I hadn't expected you'd be the girl. What's that got to do with it? Didn't you mean what you said? Frankly, no. 
And you weren't telling the truth? You promised I wasn't just to be a, a story for the Sunset Edition. I know, but can't you understand the things... ...can be so different this afternoon from what they were last night? No, no, I can't. Nora, it's not things. It's you. Last night I didn't know that you and the Blue Gardenia were the same girl. You always meant to turn her over to the police. You were lying all the time. Now, wait a minute. Nora! Come on, Crystal, I made another mistake. Check, miss. Nora, wait. Thanks, Casey. You better go along, miss. Hold it, Sam. Why? You've done a thorough job, and we appreciate it. No. It's a trap, Crystal. A dirty trap. You've made a mistake, Sam. You made the mistake. You got a cigarette? Well, you underestimated me. Well, I may not have been ahead of you, but I'm here right now, and that's what counts. There's a penalty and a stiff one for aiding and abetting a criminal. I'm glad it didn't come to that. You can have credit for finding her, even if you didn't get that exclusive you wanted. Bill, thanks for keeping your ears open. Oh. Thanks. murderers caught by columnists. No sale. Scoot. Paper. I was wrong, Al. She can't mean that much to you. She might have. You sense those things from the first time you meet a girl. What's that? Music. Can. They can everything these days. Al, that's the record that was on Preble's phonograph when the cleaning woman discovered his body. So what? But it isn't the record that was playing when Nora blacked out. But where do we go from here? Melrose Music Shop. That's not much to go on, Casey. You want the real murderers, don't you? I've already got one that's confessed and all the evidence I need to convict her. Look, Sam, stay with me a little while longer. This can be your headline. Haynes, homicide. Yes, sir. Ever hear of Harry Preble? Who hasn't? Good customer of ours, or was. Anything about this album he bought here? Miss Miller handle his account. I'll get it for you. Do that. There's a cop outside to see you and wants to ask some questions about Preble. I'll be right out. I'll tell him.
This is a wild goose chase, Casey. We aren't going to learn anything here. They've been walking around all evening in a daze. I even forgot to take a hat or a coat or a purse. It started to rain when I passed by his apartment at the, the third or the fourth time. There was a light in his window. Go on, miss. I knew he was home. I could hear him moving around. So I kept knocking, knocking and knocking. Finally, he opened the door. He seemed disturbed about something. He didn't want to let me in, but he did. The lights were turned down. I was too upset to see anything. Even the poker in his hand. I was working on the fire. Look, I haven't got much time. I've got to finish this job tonight. There's a lot of money involved. I can't go through with this alone, Harry. That's why I'm here. You've got to give me your word. Tonight. Oh, look, control yourself. You have a glass of champagne. I didn't come here to drink. Are you or aren't you going to marry me? You heard me, Harry. Answer me. Oh, don't get so excited. Be all right. Remember the afternoon I bought these? We came back here. Let's listen to this. Then you ought to go home. I have to finish that painting. He turned to put the record on. The one he bought the first day I met him. The one he was using to get rid of me. Then I saw another woman's handkerchief how he was trying to hide it. And I knew what I was going to do. The record was playing. And he didn't hear me. I had to get bitten by a dog. <laughs> I'll take a dozen of each, boys. Mother keeps asking for a picture. How about a big sigh of relief, Miss Larkin? <laughs> How's this? <sighs> That's perfect. I'll give the boys a nice smile. Excuse me. Excuse me, too. Didn't Captain Haynes explain? Oh, sure, he explains. But you know women, the stubborn sex. But take a tip from information, honey. The phone number is... Granite. 1466? Yes. Yeah. Crystal, I did what you told me. I played hard to get. Yes, but don't be too eager when he calls you tonight. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> How you doing? You can read all about it in the Chronicle. 